If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable muck coins, check out my sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the college and Madden cheese as always. In today's video, I'm going to go over some things that were quietly or even secretly patched by EA on both Madden and college football over the last couple days, uh, which is something that uh, normally they put out patch notes, but they've been pretty secretive when it comes to patch notes for some of the more embarrassing things that they've been trying to fix. So before I get into that, as always, if you guys want me to keep you up to date with the changes that happen to both games throughout the year, which I typically try to do, just make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's get right into the video. Now, I'm going to start off with college because theirs was the most recent. Yesterday uh, was supposed to be a server maintenance that was supposed to begin at Thursday. If you follow College Football Direct's Twitter or Madden Direct's Twitter, they a lot of times will have uh, tweets that they put out. And this is really the only reason that I follow them, when they're telling you that server maintenance is going to happen, which typically means there's going to be an update. Now, this one says server maintenance will begin tomorrow, Thursday, October 31st at 6 a.m. They always tell you to finish your online games because a lot of them will be unavailable. And then they'll also uh, sometimes post at the bottom here, we will provide an update when maintenance is complete. Now, typically when they say that part, it means that they're going to put out some patch notes for, for their audience. But the time came and went and they never put out any patch notes. So to me, that means one of two things. Number one, they've done this in the past where whatever they're trying to implement didn't work or they whatever they fixed was kind of embarrassing and they didn't really want to tell us. Now, the most embarrassing thing that I could think of that happened recently in the last patch, which was like a week or two ago when it comes to college football, was they updated the rosters. But for some reason, there was this new 56-player glitch where I'm sure you'll see some of my, uh, some of my gameplays because I, I know I had comments about that in some gameplays that I already put out where there's players receivers run around wearing number 56 their body types were completely different meaning it wasn't really the same player um, and I think that their ratings were hurt as well now from what I researched this happened when uh, you, an injured player would be put into the game or a player that wasn't currently on the starting depth chart was put into the game which a lot of people do when you go into an online game you'll put in your favorite player regardless of who they are like me personally I'll put in the fastest players regardless of what they're rated and a lot of times they're not in the top six of that depth chart so that's why I would get um, players that were number 56 and you would see that on defense as well so I'll, like I'll have touchdowns where I'm scoring number 56 on offense against number 56 on defense and it was something that really was just ruining the immersion of the game game well i don't know if this was patched but this was the first thing that i checked like i said they didn't put out any patch notes but i tried to play a quick game before i went into this video before just to research to see if that was still happening and i didn't see any players some random players 56 happening so it makes me think that they probably patched that and the reason they wouldn't report that is because it's a it's an issue that they created a week or two ago when they implemented the roster update in the previous uh patch so why would you want to you know admit to that embarrassing mistake and the fact like i said it really was game altering to the point where like i said it really ruined the immersion and kind of made the game less fun to play so it feels like they patched that but let me know in the comment section if you guys are still having that issue i just know that when i went in and played a game it wasn't having that issue so from my perspective it seems like they might have patched it but it was an offline game and this might be something that happens in online games i'm not really sure but it's definitely an issue um, that if it wasn't addressed, I'm hoping that they will in the future at some point. Now, that's pretty much it for college football, but Madden also had a secret patch not too long ago. Now, for Madden, they've been doing even more secret updates. I swear to you, I logged in on a Saturday to play some games, and there was an update on a Saturday, which was super weird. It, once again, no patch notes. Then, two days ago, a day before uh, the college football direct one, there was a Wednesday. It said they were going to do server maintenance on Wednesday, October 30th. And then it doesn't say anything about letting you know, you know, just like I said in college, a lot of times they'll say we'll let you know uh, what happened when it's complete. It doesn't say that on this one. So this one they never even intended to uh, bring any updates. They just wanted to make sure that people, if they were, if they got on and uh, they weren't having access or weren't having uh, access to the servers, that they knew why. But they never intended to actually put out any patch notes once again. And this particular one, I had to dig pretty deep. Uh, I found a, a website called Operational Sports, which is a pretty on the on, on the ball website, especially when it comes to Madden updates. And it, it looks more like uh, like a Reddit uh, post more than than actual reporting. But somebody replied to somebody asking what the newest update was about with what looks like lines of code. They were talking about system slash gameplay slash data version, antifreeze shared utility state flow, QB loco dropbacks antifreeze it's a bunch of like you know short terms of text which makes me think when i hear qb dropback qb rollout as you can see in this particular uh text 
that it looks to me like they probably were trying to patch another issue that they created once again in a previous patch, which once again, like I said, makes sense that they don't want to advertise their mistakes. But in a previous patch, if you guys don't know, they basically made it so that you can't use the rollout glitch when playing under center when it comes to like single back formations and stuff like that, that you couldn't just basically break the pocket right away because apparently that was an exploit that people were using. So what they did was it forced an animation where the quarterback would basically have to do his entire drop back, which if you run pass plays under center, and somebody's like nano blitzing you or sending crazy blitzes and stuff like that, that's basically a guaranteed sack. So basically what it looks like they did with this particular patch is they basically reverted back to the way it was before. And now you can see it. you have the ability to roll out right away when it comes to playing under center, which is another thing that if you like to run single back offenses, I mean, that's probably aside from gun formations, single back's probably the biggest, most expansive version of the playbook. So if you run shotgun, you didn't really notice anything. But if you run single back, which is like I said, there's probably the most sub formations in single back next to shotgun. Those are probably the two biggest. So if you like to run any type of single back formations with this problem, it really killed your passing game. You couldn't roll out. You couldn't do anything. Um, so that was something that, you know, once again, it was pretty game breaking. And it looks like that's what they patched. That's the only real evidence that I have other than the fact that I can go into the game and do it live now. But that's pretty much it. So I don't think, I mean, based off of what I'm looking at here, it's all based off of quarterback animations. And I know that the biggest issue was the uh, the ability to to move from under center when, when it came to single back. So that's probably what that was there. After that, I'm sure there was a bunch of stability fixes and all that stuff. They, that's how they typically do. Um, other than that, though, there was a ratings update last night, the weekly ratings update. And since I'm making a video about Madden's update, I might as well go over this with you guys as well. Um, I'll go over the players that went up in rating first, which is something I used to do a long time ago. I stopped doing on Fridays because they didn't really perform very well. So if you guys want to get back to doing weekly updates on ratings for Madden, let me know in the comment section or hit the like button. Uh, but going up, we had George Kittle go up a point. He's up to a 98 overall now. I don't know why he's not a 99. I think George, George Kittle is an outstanding player. Um, I mean, he doesn't get credit. You know, as a blocker, he's one of the best blockers in the game. One of the best uh, two-way tight ends as far as blocking and receiving in the game. So it's surprising to see that he was a 97 overall. And now he's a 98. feels better. But like I said, to me, he should be a 99. And maybe he'll get there pretty soon because uh, he's kind of one of the last weapons uh, out there for the Niners at the moment. Dexter Lawrence got a plus one. He's another guy. The way he's playing right now probably should be a 99 as well. Um, he's, I think he still leads the league in sacks. I saw they gave him a plus two in strength, meaning he wasn't even uh, a 99 in strength. But he is now. Um, which is crazy because once again, this guy's playing nose and getting tackles as a, or getting sacks, leading the league in sacks as a nose tackle, which is insane. Next up, we got Laramie Tunsil, who's a plus one to a 95 overall, uh, left tackle for the Texans, one of the best in the game, been that way for a long time. Uh, we also got Josh Allen. Josh Allen gets a plus one up to a 94. I'm, I don't know if he has a turnover yet or an interception yet. I know for a while there he was like perfect, like 14 touchdowns, zero interceptions. That dude is playing out of his mind, and considering that he's doing it without really any real receiving weapons. I mean, he has some now. They've definitely up improved with, with Amari Cooper and Keon Coleman's coming into his own. And, you know, there's definitely, he definitely has a, a plethora of weapons now with, with the addition of Amari Cooper. But, but at the beginning of the year, he's doing it with a rookie wide receiver and a bunch of guys. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe Dalton Kincaid, you could say, is probably the best receiver he had at the time. His running back got hurt. To me, I love Josh Allen. He's now the third highest rated quarterback. I think that should continue to go up. He should definitely be in the MVP conversation if he's not. Next up, we got Minka Fitzpatrick, who I've also uh, been a, a fan of for a while. Talk about him every year being too lowly rated. He's up to a 94 overall. Sounds pretty good. Joe Mixon gets a plus one. He looks like he's got fresh legs in, uh, in Houston. He did look like he kind of lost a step. In, uh, in, in Cincinnati, but in, in Houston, he looks like he found the fountain of youth. A couple running backs have done that. Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, you name it. A couple of guys have switched teams and it just looks like they're just rejuvenated. I don't know if they got, got a step back or what, but he definitely has been playing better. Terry McLaurin up to a 92. I didn't see if they improved his speed. Um, that's something that you always got to be aware of when you have super fast receivers like that, but he's definitely playing better as the season progresses. At the beginning of the year, it didn't seem like he was really a part of the offense, but lately he's really been a big part of the offense. Uh, Rashawn Slater got a plus one up to a 91. Uh, Daniel Hunter got a plus one up to a 90. Josh Jacobs got a plus one up to a 90. He's a guy, too. Looks like he's regained uh, a little bit, uh, found a youth as far as running backs. Greg Rousseau up to an 88. Buffalo Bills pass rusher off the edge. Very good player. Chris Olave <clears throat> got a plus one up to an 87. 
Speaking of Ohio State receivers, I should get a plus one. What about that catch last night from Garrett Wilson? That was one of the best catches I've ever seen. I didn't know. I, I mean, that's, you know, those guys, Ohio State is known as wide receiver U for a reason. Those guys are amazing. Jake Matthews got the highest boot, uh, boost today with a plus two to up to an 87. And then we got Jamar Gibbs, who also is a big fan of. I love Jamar Gibbs. He got a plus one up to an 86. And that's pretty much as far as I'm going to go on the ups. Uh, we'll go to the down. The guy's going down. Max Cosme got a negative one down to a 96. Um, I, I don't really understand that. I think he's a great player. This one, The next one I really don't understand. Joe Burrow got a minus one down to a 93. He only really had one bad game. This guy, wasn't he like leading the league in touchdowns before they played the Eagles? I know that he didn't have a good game against the Eagles, but I mean, he kind of did. If you, I, I, I'm an Eagles fan, so I watched that entire game. The first half, he was... He was Killing us on third down, especially he could he converted crazy third down. I think the one was like a third and twenty or something like that. He converted. Uh, I don't understand why he went down a point off that performance. The Eagles defense definitely did play well. He was down uh, one of his best receivers um, in T Higgins, and uh, they also. I mean, if, if you want to put if you're going to put Joe Burrow down a point, why not put Jamar Chase down a point? He didn't do a lot. He had like fifty some yards. To me, that was just the Eagles defense playing great football. I don't think Joe Burrow, if you go off the year that he's had, because it shouldn't be a week-to-week -week rating. Everybody will have a bad game every once in a while. But the year that Joe Burrow has had, and to put him down a point, makes no sense at all. Uh, Stephon Diggs also down a point. He's not really uh, picked up in Houston. I mean, even with Nico Collins getting hurt, he's not been the same guy in Houston that he's been in uh, that he was in previous stops. Uh, it doesn't look that way. So I, I kind of agree with that. He's definitely not the man like everybody thought he would be. He probably should have stayed in Buffalo. I don't know. Maybe in Buff. Maybe he really. Maybe he lost his step. Maybe that's why he stopped getting the ball so much in Buffalo. It's really hard to tell. Uh, Derwin James down a point to a ninety. Um, Aaron Jones also down a point. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't know what happened to Aaron Jones last week, but I think he's been doing pretty good in Minnesota. I think the entire Minnesota team, though, is coming back down to earth, so that might be why. Demarcus Lawrence down a point. I thought he was injured. I didn't even think he was playing. How do you go down a point on, 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 as an injured player? That doesn't even make sense. Tyron Matthew down a point. Um, yeah, I know the Saints really ain't playing that good, but I don't know if Ty Tyron Matthew's not playing that good. Dak Prescott down a point. Uh, that one, yeah, I think that he, I think he threw two or three picks in the in the Niners game, um, costly ones too. You know what I mean? Like that was another game, just like their playoff game a couple years ago. If like Dak played better, they probably would have won. Um, so that I definitely agree with. Tyron Smith down a point to an eighty-eight. Uh, they're really hating on the Cowboys, even though Tyron Smith isn't even on the Cowboys anymore. <laughs> he's a Jet now, but he's still he's still he's still you know I still look at him as a Cowboy. Ke Keenan Allen down a point to an eighty-six. I don't really know about put Doc and Keenan Allen. I don't know what happened there. I know that. Caleb Williams should be docked the point. He played like trash in that in that in that Washington game. So that guy, that he should be down a point. I don't know if the receivers are at fault if the quarterback's playing horrible. I saw one play in particular where he was running around in the pocket and then it was slid a yard short of the first down on third and two. I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? It was he he's I, let me tell you something. Caleb Williams, I feel bad for Bears fans, man. Caleb Williams just looks like a knucklehead to me. Like I don't I don't get it. Like he just looks crazy. Uh, Kenny Clark. Also negative a point, and Tyler Lockett also negative a point. Both those guys down in A6. I'm going to stop there. But uh, like I said, if you guys want to see me do these player ratings updates every week, I could go back to putting that in my rotation. But I'm going to go to the end of the video there, give you guys all the updates that I could find. Hopefully, if you guys noticed any other ones, let me know in the comment section. Let everybody know in the comment section some things you saw change because obviously there's a lot of things that need to be changed, but they just don't always tell us. So I'm going to go to my end of the video there. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.